Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Tom Markworth, and I'm excited to talk to you today. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, Undergraduate's Guide to Product Management as a Career. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the Product School, which is the online leader in product management education, for having me here today. A little bit about myself before I dive into my talk. I've got uh, over 20 years in product management experience. Started my career in consumer hardware at, at companies like HP and, and Logitech. Moved on to consumer digital media, where I was an early product manager at, at Roku and also worked at, at Shutterfly. And most currently, um, I am in software as a service. I had several years at, at Ring Central and now am a lead product manager at Zoom. So my goal today is to give you a little bit of overview of like what it is a product manager does and, and how you can find yourself in, into a product management career as, as an undergraduate student. So what would you do as a, as a product manager anyways? At a, at a very high level, a PM will help deliver products that have business and user impact. So what, what exactly does that mean? Well, in, in three words, I describe product management as finding a problem that needs solving, looking for a solution to that problem, and then measuring the outcome of that solution. And it's really kind of an ongoing loop because it, you know, what's so wonderful about product management is like your job really is never done. You come up with a solution to a problem, you measure the outcome, but then you figure out about how to make that that product better and better so that it solves that problem better and better. So let's talk about the tools that a product manager uses. And I like to do this in combination with like all the inputs that you get. You spend your whole day as a product manager getting feedback from customers. You do that by surveying customers, by talking to customers. You look at usage data through product analytics tools. Um, you get competitive insights, whether you are kind of going out and using competitive uh, products yourself or you have you know, colleagues that, that are able to you know, assess those competitive insights. You look at market trends and then very importantly, looking at technology trends because that can help you know, kind of dictate you know, what you can and can't do. Uh, the tools and techniques of a product manager surveys. Um, I, I love to use surveys. That's a good way to get a qualitative pulse on, on what customers are doing with the product. Um, interviews, like nothing takes the place of, of being able to talk to a customer directly. Uh, collaboration. So if, if you think about uh, you know, product manager's role, it's, it's to work with all sorts of different people in the company. And I'll, and I'll talk about that in a second, but, but having good collaboration tools uh, to, to work with others in your company are super important. Uh, wireframing. So wireframing is being able to put like, uh, you know, your ideas in, in, a, in a visual state. And you know, most product managers will be able to work directly with designers, but sometimes it's great to be able to just show visually like what you, what you mean and how you, how you might approach solving a problem. Um, project task management. Uh, software super important to to being able to to track the progress of your project to be able to uh, communicate uh, uh, you know requirements that you have and those go hand in hand with like software development tools like a like a Jira where you might write user stories product analytics tools um, like a, like a mix panel or amplitude are are great for being able to assess what's going on in your in your product and. And finally, experimentation and testing software. So you're able to launch something out uh, to, to customers and be able to test it before you, you, you roll it out to 100% of customers. So what do product managers deliver? There's a whole bunch of, of deliverables. They can be from you know, really small things to really big things. Um, some of the big deliverables that a product manager have is the is a backlog. You know, backlog is a list of like all the projects that you could be doing, uh, kind of usually ranked by by some sort of, of priority, and that really helps you decide okay what's going to be important in the next in the next uh, you know sprint quarter or however you do your development cycle. Um, competitive assessment that's being able to take a real thorough look at 
know, everyone in your space and understand like what's going on and what makes your product you know really unique from from others that are already out in the market. Kickoff documents. Kickoff documents are uh, you know think of it as like a, a a presentation or a document that you share with your team, like all your cross-functional stakeholders before you kick off a project. It gets everyone on the same page uh, as to you know what it is you're going to be doing with your with your project. Requirements. Uh, re the requirements are like are written in in in, in visual. Uh, you know, indications of what it is the team is actually going to build. And you know, usually you do those, those requirements in conjunction with a, with a designer. Um, feature previews, you know, as you're getting close to launching something, you want to be able to tell others in your company, you know, potentially uh, your customers as to like what's actually, you know, what's actually coming. A feature preview gives you an overview of, of what it is you just built. And then finally, dashboards. You know, once I, I talked earlier about outcomes, and once you've launched your product, it's great to be able to assess the effectiveness of them. So dashboards are a, a tool that show you know, how many people are are using this feature, and, and, and you know how long are they spending on the feature, and any other kind of you know key product indicators that, that you're tracking for your for your new product. Um, one thing I absolutely love about being a product manager is you get to work with so many different people in your company. I call them, you know, stakeholders. Uh, in, in those very, let me talk through some of them. So you'll work, you know, if you're particularly if you're working like on a, a product that a customer kind of touches, you know, whether that's a, a physical electronics product or a piece of software like a, like an app or a website. You'll spend a lot of time with designers, kind of thinking through the the user experience. Uh, marketing is is your partner for you know how you take something that you're that is close to finished and and telling the world about it so that you start to get you know users and and sales. Uh, your support team, an amazing stakeholder, and 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 while you may not be doing support yourself. The support team is is a great stakeholder in terms of helping educate a product manager as to like different problems that a, a customer is having. Like uh, you know, our, when you when you one thing I like to do with my support team is get a get a ranking of like top call uh, drivers to really understand like what sort of problems customers are having like when they call in, and those are those are potential problem areas for. Uh, someone in a product management role to solve. Engineering and QA, of course, those are your partners for actually getting the, the product built. Um, you know, engineers do the, you know, do the coding and of the product that you're going to build. And in QA is the is the team that helps uh, test that. QA stands for, for quality assurance. Uh, usually those are those are engineers as well. Your, your finance and legal roles. Help make sure that you know whatever it is you're doing is is going to stand up uh, legally. That there, you know, for example, there's no privacy concerns. Uh, that uh, you know, finance can help you understand you know what it would take to to break even on your project um, to help you be able to forecast usage. Uh, other PMs are amazing stakeholders. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll you'll work with other product managers in other areas of your company to bring together a product and and sometimes it's just great to get feedback from other you know other smart pms in in your company and finally your your executive team uh, another key stakeholder uh, your executive team of course responsible for setting strategic direction for the company and your product direction you know has to really fit into the strategic direction of the of the company you know, one of the questions I get from a lot of product managers to be is like, what do you, what do, you do every day? And uh, product managers do so many different things uh, every day. And, and there is no typical day as a product manager. That's one of the reasons I, I love being a product manager. Like some things you might do, like, you know, you might be uh, involved with your designer, you know, reviewing, uh, reviewing, uh, you know, what's called a, a UX or user experience design, and and those are the, you know, those are the the you know I talked earlier about wireframes, the wireframes that show like how a a, a a user actually goes through your your product, you know, whether it's like a 
you know, a sign up flow or trying to make a, a transaction, it's really important to be able to, to design those flows to decide, like, you know, when users have to make a decision, what happens when they decide to do X versus Y. Uh, talking to customers, it's really important as a, as a product manager to reach out you know, directly to, to customers. Um, in some cases, you know, if you're in a consumer business, you're just able to you know, reach out to customers directly and talk to them. And other times you, you um, do it through you know, your sales force if you're you know, working on a big enterprise product. Um, you might find yourself running a, a project team meeting in any a given day where you bring together all the stakeholders involved in, in designing and, and building your product and, and to check in on progress of the project. You know, sometimes your job after you've set the requirements is really just to unblock your team. You know, figure out like what's what's going on with everybody, and and if somebody's running into a roadblock for whatever reason, um, you figure out the best way to kind of unblock that unblock that partner so that they can keep going. Uh, product managers usually will spend a lot of time analyzing usage data. Usage data really tells us like what's going on um, in the product. You know, how many people are using this. Uh, re, you know, retention is is um, a, a top type of piece of data that I look at. So if somebody starts using my feature or my product on day one, on day seven, on day thirty, how many of those users continue to use the product? And there's all sorts of usage uh, data. Um, it's it's you know, if you're thinking about being a product manager, definitely recommend uh, you know looking at you know the top types of of, of metrics that. Uh, that product managers look at uh, because that is something that you'll talk about in interviews and something you'll use on a on a daily basis. Uh, writing requirements, you know, once you realize, okay, this is my solution to problem X. Well, now you got to put pen to paper and start writing your requirements. Now, different companies communicate requirements in in incredibly different ways. It can be long document. It can be a set of user stories. Uh, it might be something visual like a UX design, or it might even be a prototype that uh, that uh, engineers build from. So, you know, re- the way requirements are, are communicated really differ from company to company, uh, but it is the job of a product manager to, to, you know, summarize those requirements so you know, the team's really kind of all marching in the, the same direction. Uh, sometimes, you know, I talked about executives and executives are, can be such a, a, a key critical stakeholder. Uh, managing the expectations of interested executives is, is, is something you'll do because there might be somebody on your, your executive staff who's just really wants something delivered in a certain time frame. It's your job as a product manager to be the interface um, kind of between your team you know, and the executive team uh, in terms of managing those expectations. You know, I talked about marketing as a as a stakeholder. You know, you might as you again as you're getting close to launching a product, brief your marketing and support. You're telling them like, what what is really unique about this product, this solution that I built that is so that's going to be so different from you know other things out in the market. And finally, you know, consulting with legal and security on the viability of a of a plan, something that you may think is, uh, you know, sounds, you know, very reasonable, you know, maybe it has, uh, you know, legal will highlight some some concerns from a privacy perspective that, that you didn't think about. And that's why it's so incredibly important to, you know, to really develop a, a, a you know, a, a whole bunch of uh, contacts within your company that are cross-functional stakeholders. Um, you know, whatever you do during the day, you know, whether it's like really working kind of low level on, on product design or, you know, high level strategy, uh, everything you do, do during the day as a product manager should support the following. You know, one is, you know, really being able to create and share uh, your product strategy and the roadmap that helps you realize that strategy. You want to understand your user or customer needs. You, you know, you can't really solve a problem unless you understand like what the problem is. Uh, prioritizing what gets built. Um, so, you know, if you've got three different things that you can build, uh, prioritizing between one, two, and three are, are really important and brings kind of clarity to, to the team in terms of what they need to execute first. 
uh, delivering the feature. Um, uh, of course, that's important. That is now working with the engineers, you know, answering their questions along the way. And if a requirement's not clear or, you, you know, kind of helping clarify what, what the, you know, what it is you want to get built um, or, uh, you know, other things that are important are, are assessing impact. So I talked about like all the different things that a product manager can do during the day. Um, you know, so whether you're doing real low level work in terms of just defining the intricacies of your product or you're working on high level strategy, whatever you do during the day should support several different things. You know, one is creating and sharing a, a product strategy and roadmap. Your roadmap is really the, 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 the document that helps communicate to your team, you know, whether it's your development team or interested parties like your marketing and sales team, like what it is you're planning on doing over a given time period. Uh, you need to understand your user and customer needs. And, and that's it. so spending time doing that every day is critical to making sure you're solving the right problems. Your job as a product, product manager is prioritization. So you need to prioritize what gets built. If you have three different options, it's your job to try to assess, you know, what is going to be the kind of like the, the lowest uh, uh, or, or the highest return projects and, and by highest return I mean it's it's the lowest amount of effort for the greatest amount of return and return can be you know something financial it could be you know increasing usage of the product um, there's a lot of different ways that you you measure return but it's your job as a product manager to to prioritize and and I know a, a lot of other instructors at, at, at product school have talked about the you know the importance of, of prioritization um, delivering the feature, you know, as you start, your team starts developing your product, you need to be there along the way and to help, you know, clarify questions. You know, maybe uh, uh, an engineer comes to you and has a, you know, a different recommendation from something you put into uh, a requirement. It's your job to kind of think through that, synthesize that information and either course correct or, you know, help people kind of help clarify, uh, you know, what it is you intended to do. Um, assessing impact, you know, that's after you've launched something like, what, what, what kind of impact did my product have? Did I um, increase usage? You know, did I increase retention? You know, what, what was the result of what it is I did? And then finally, you know, unblocking, championing your team. Uh, I, like I said before, product manager work with so many different people. Um, I think it's incredibly uh, important for a product manager to be always on the outlook for their team and thinking about what they can do to help you know unblock their their team from you know challenges that they're having along the development cycle. So how do you be successful in a product management role? Let's talk about why product management might be a good career for you. You know, product management is a good career for you if you love working in in cross functional teams. You love you know, really working with people from all sorts of different parts of the company uh, and, you know, and from with customers, of course, uh, product manager might be a good career for you. If you can really bounce between, you know, doing, getting into the low level details of a product and, 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 and going all the way up to like high level strategy, you know, product managers constantly um, are, are, are changing their, their, their focus and, and you need to be able to do that as a product manager. Um, product manager is a great career if you love finding and solving problems. You know, as, as I mentioned at the beginning of the of the presentation, product managers really find problems. They then find solution to those those problems and then measure outcomes. If you love listening to others, uh, that might make product management a good career for you. Product managers really have to, to listen. You have to listen to your engineers as to what's technically feasible. You have to listen to customers in terms of what they want. You have to listen to your finance team in terms of, you know, how many resources you actually can throw at a problem. Um, you really have to spend time listening. And then finally, if you want to have a, a big impact, but not a big team, product management uh, can be a great career for you. 
uh, early in your product management career, you're, you will probably find yourself managing no one. And even as you move up your career, um, there are often a lot less product managers than people in other functions like, like uh, engineers at your company. And you may uh, you know, only have a, a small team, but your impact is, is, is incredibly um, you know, profound on, on the company's success. So skills you'll need to develop. You know, if you're uh, a sophomore, junior in, in college, or you know, maybe you're a, a graduate student, you know, here are the skills that you want to think about and that will probably be assessed when you interview for a product management role. Um, one, communication, you know, really being able to have strong kind of written verbal communication is important. Uh, and it, it's 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 not just like how well you write, it's 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 um, you know how you know concise you are, how um, you know, how persuasive you are in, in putting together an argument as to, you know, why something, you know, should be done. Collaboration, again, because you work with so many different people, the ability to, to collaborate as a team member is incredibly important. Um, critical thinking, you know, you'll have to, you know, assess, you know, why you should be taking um, a, a certain direction and to really be able to think through a problem as to, you know, why is this solution um, the best, you know, kind of answer to this problem? Or do I even have the problem, you know, right to, to begin with? Creativity, um, you know, product managers will have to, you know, come up with creative solutions to you know, to problems. You're trying to do something that nobody else has, you know, perhaps done before. Leadership, at times you have to step in and and lead. And that, you know, leadership doesn't necessarily mean, you know, managing somebody who's underneath you. Uh, leadership means, you know, really inspiring a team, you know, helping them understand why does this team even exist to begin with? And in and, and moving that team along towards, uh, a shared outcome. Time management, because you have so many different things to do during the day, you'll want to be able to, you know, manage your time effectively. Uh, a lot of times as a product manager, that that means deciding, you know, what do you not do during the day? Uh, is, you know, I have a lot of days where I'm just like so overloaded that I've really got to prioritize my work and decide like what, what's important to be done. The ability to apply technology, you know, sometimes product managers come from very technical backgrounds. They've been engineers themselves. Um, but like myself, I, I, I didn't study engineering, um, but I, I have to work with engineers on a daily basis. And so, you know, studying about technology, talking to your engineers about technology is important so that you can understand, like, what's possible when it comes up to when it comes around to, you know, finding a solution. And then finding, finally, uh, industry domain knowledge is, is important. You're not going to have that as, as an undergraduate, but as you get into your first role, you know, really understanding everything about your, you know, your industry, your market, um, makes you a valuable team member because you'll be able to more effectively find problems to solutions. Uh, when I interview candidates, uh, I look for like all those skills that I mentioned before, but there's also, you know, very importantly, traits that that um, I look for in a product manager. So one key trait is, is, is empathy. Um, you have to be able to put yourself in the shoes of others to really find the best solutions that work for, for your customers. Um, passion, you know, looking for someone who's just like really excited about solving the, you know, the, you know, interesting problems in, in, in launching those out into the markets, you know, a lot of hiring managers and product managers will just look for people who are very passionate about products and, and building uh, in general. Curiosity um, is, is important. So, you, know, you, you look for people that, you know, have that curiosity to, to go and, and, and look for, you know, all sorts of, of, of data and, you know, uh, you know, customer, uh, customer facing knowledge, um, integrity, you know, you, of course, you want to be trusted as a, as a product leader and, and you need to be seen as someone that other team members can be counted on. 
and finally intelligence and then and then confidence um you know sometimes you, you may come up with a, a solution that you are not 100 percent sure you are but you're you know you're 98 percent sure and you need to show that confidence with the team uh that that you know you're making the right direction and 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 pushing that team you know on Let's talk now about how you find your first product manager position. Um, let's talk about fit first. You know, when you get your first product manager position, you want to look for something that is like the right fit for you know who you are. And in product management, there's actually a, a bunch of different roles that can exist, particularly as you get into a, a larger uh, company like my own. Um, you might be working on something that's like a, a core product, and that's you know a core product is what you know generally like the the product that your company is known for. Um, but there's all sorts of other different product manager roles that are really interesting. And growth product management, you're focused on you know, small optimizations of your product because you're you're trying to uh, improve uh, the number of users who activate into your product, the the number of users that are retained. And in, in, in as a growth product manager, you think about those those smaller things that you know that if you're able to make those changes can lead to you know really strong um, you know outcomes for the company kind of uh, down the road. Platform product managers are um, often more technical, and they're um, putting together all the, the 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 APIs that that are you know really like the the back end behind your product, and thinking about like how your product uh, can be you know put together in a platform where you know other developers outside of your company can can build on top of your product. Um, there's technical. Vertical product managers, a, a vertical product manager, is someone who thinks about how do I take uh, the product that I've developed and you know really modify it or advocate for features that work for say a particular industry. You know, verticals might be like the healthcare industry that has you know very specific uh, privacy requirements. It might be financial services. It might be um, education where. Uh, a lot of the users of the product are, uh, you know, you know, younger um, students, you know, have their own needs. So there's a lot of really interesting um, vertical product management work as well. Partnership integrations; those are product managers who think about, like, well, how does my product work with, um, you know, work with another product? You know, how can I? Uh, for example, you know, embed my product in a collaboration plot pro, uh, uh, platform or a CRM platform, um, or maybe I'm trying to get other companies to you know integrate directly into my product, um, uh, and, and that's like what a, a partnership kind of product manager does is like working with lots of other companies to either take your product and have it work in their product, or take their product and have it work in your product. And finally, there's specialized product managers. Um, these are, are are typically, you know, kind of more experienced folks who who have kind of deep knowledge in something like security, how to how to launch a product internationally, or um, privacy concerns. So 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 many different different fits, um, but it's important to find one that's really you know, interesting to you. So in addition to a position fit, there's also company fits. And you know, one of the things is, uh, you know, someone who wants to be a product manager, you got to think about like, well, what type of company do I want to work for? Um, some some key, uh, you know, kind of different ways you can evaluate like a company is looking at its its company phase. Uh, you you know, are you looking at a company that's in startup mode? Is it in growth mode, or is it a mature product? Uh, you know, startups are are you, you know, usually much smaller companies, mature uh, companies, of course, are much bigger. And there's there's pluses and minuses to working in, you know, in in both. You know, in a, in a startup, you'll, you'll have the opportunity to wear all sorts of hats and do all sorts of different things. Um, at a mature company, you'll probably have a much narrower role 
Um, but you'll have all sorts of resources throughout the company, whether it's you know a research team or a really developed uh, design team to to you know to help you do things. And you'll likely have a much bigger audience. You know you'll be launching products at, at, at scale. So it's it's you know really important to think about you know do I want to be wearing lots of hats working you know, really quickly kind of in a startup phase, um, or do I want like the resources and, and reach that a, that a, a mature, bigger company has? Uh, product type, a lot of different product types, but, you know, are you really interested in something that's more uh, software oriented or something that's more, you know, hardware oriented? Uh, you know, hardware is fascinating uh, because you're producing a, a physical product that has to be uh, distributed around the world. It has to be packaged and messaged and priced. Um, software is really interesting because uh, you know, what's wonderful about software is it can change so frequently. You can launch something, you can test it, and depending on the results of those tests, you can, um, you, you know, within a matter of, of weeks or even days, you, you know, change your 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 product. Um, and, and, and you're able to measure in, in software as well, which, you know, makes software really interesting. Who is your, who's your target customer? You know, are you really interested in launching products, um, in the consumer space, what, you know, what we call kind of B2C, uh, or enterprise, uh, you know, enterprise is business to business and you're building, um, a product that other businesses use. And, and so which one is, is interesting to you? Uh, product appeal. There's kind of mass mar market products, and then there's kind of niche products. You know, a niche product is something that really goes after a particular vertical. Uh, it might be like a product that that vertical uses really regularly um, on a on daily basis. Like take like you know, property management software. Uh, that you, if you're building property management software, you're building something that like a product a property manager uses on a daily basis. Um, but mass market, like a like a streaming service, uh, for example, you're you're trying to build a product that applies to or is of interest to millions and, and millions of users, but you know, they may use your product one day, but then not the not the next. There's all sorts of different revenue models, um, subscription uh, fees are a, a big way that that. Um, companies can make money, advertising, and then transaction, you know, whether it's, you know, e-commerce transaction or, you know, if you have a, a, a marketplace product like a, a delivery service, um, transactions are, are another, you know, kind of revenue model. Um, culture, uh, this is like one of, you know, of this list, this is probably one of the most important things to look at in terms of finding custom, uh, uh, a company fit. You know, is your company a very engineering driven culture uh, you know or is it a very kind of sales and marketing uh, driven and culture I've worked in I've worked in both and there's you know, there's pluses and minuses to you know to, to both and you have to find like what's the right fit for you and then finally you know ever uh, you know since the last couple of of, of years, you know, the, you know, thinking about like your, your work style is incredibly important too. Um, you know, what's so, you know, what's been so, um, uh, such a big change, you know, over these, these past couple of years with the pandemic is there's um, a much greater acceptance of doing product management remotely. Um, I, I do my, my job probably 95% remotely. Um, and, and, and uh, kind of, I guess, pre-pandemic, so many product managers were expected to be in the office, you know, there with their their teams. Um, you get to decide um, a lot of times now, do I want to find a role where I am in, in person? Uh, do I want to be, you know, remote because I, I really want to be you know, in my hometown? Or do I want something that's hybrid where I'm working from home sometimes, um, but then I have that opportunity to go in and collaborate with my colleagues uh, you know, in person as well in the office. Let's now talk about the past to getting into product management as an undergrad. Um, first, I want to talk about direct pass, and I'm going to talk about indirect pass. Um, before I get in there, I, I want to share a story. So 
you know, probably twice a, a summer I go to Yosemite National Park and um, I live in the, the Bay Area, California. And, and to, to get to Yosemite, you have to drive up into the Sierra Mountains. And at, at some point before the entrance of, of Yosemite Park, there is a, 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 a steep grade that you have to, to go up and um, it's called a uh, uh, priest grade. And there is a an old priest grade path that you can take and there is a new priest grade, grade path that you can take. The old path is straight up a hill. It's super steep, kind of dangerous, um, but it is like the mo- the direct, uh, the most direct and the quickest way to, to get to the top. There is a much more indirect uh, way called the new priest grade road that is, is very windy. It's got great scenery, very safe, and it still gets you to the top. Both paths kind of you know, end up at the same place. One takes a little bit longer um, and, and is scenic. The other gets you there more directly. You, you know, similarly with like your product management career, there are kind of different paths that you can take. So a direct path into product management is, um, it, you know, going straight into product management right after your undergraduate degree. One great way to do that is in a, with a bigger company looking for companies that have an associate product manager program. These are very structured rotational programs um, at top tech companies where they um, uh, take you, uh, you know, in with a, a, a class of other colleagues and, and, and expose you to different product management challenges in the, in the company's philosophies over the first year and, and make sure that you get placed in a role that's right for you. Um, you know, kind of on the other end, if you're looking at smaller companies, networking becomes um, incredibly important. Um, a lot of smaller companies won't start hiring product managers until they have an actual need. And so if you're looking at a smaller company, you might be looking at interviewing kind of very late uh, you know, in the year uh, versus like a structured um, program, uh, APM program, they might be doing interviews much earlier, like, you know, even in the, the fall for jobs that don't start until the, the next summer. Um, and internships are an incredibly great way to, to get a role. So, you know, if you can find a good internship after your sophomore, junior year, you work really hard, uh, show that you know you you fit into the the company. Um, you might be able to leverage that internship into you know a full time role after you know after college. But those are kind of three of the you know the different paths, uh, direct paths into product as an undergrad. Now let's talk about the uh, indirect paths. Um, I think an indirect path is absolutely um, you know okay, and there's kind of three grouping of jobs that can be really helpful if you're thinking about a product management career. You know, one is just to understand how do you build products? So starting out as a, as a designer, an engineer, you know, someone in program management who's, who's really kind of, you know, bringing together um, a lot of the cross-functional team and, and, and um, you know, developing the, the plan for the, uh, the the team to you know execute on um, or you know in analytics too you know re- really get to understand um, you know the kind of the outcome part of, of building products. Another one is taking products to to market. Um, you know if you're in a marketing sales role, business development role, you get that chance to really understand like what customers, what partners are are thinking about products. Um, and, 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 you know, a, a product manager has got to be able to mount balance kind of both, you know, the build aspect as well as the, the take product products to market aspect and getting experience in either of those, um, can be, uh, you know, a great way to get into product management. Finally, uh, supporting product users, you know, if you have a chance to work in operations, uh, a customer support role, you'll get to hear on a daily basis, like what product managers or what customers are, are thinking about a product, what frustrations that they have. And that can be a great foundation to, um, you know, kind of transitioning into a product management role because you already have that experience of, you know, what, you know, what customers think about a product. So totally fine to, to start on an indirect path uh, is, as well into, into product management. In fact, kind of when I started in product management, it really was, you know, indirect path was the the predominant way of of getting in because you you look for people who would have you know experience in in you know either building products or taking products uh, to market. 
you know, to, to be a product manager. Finally, let's talk about preparing for your first interview. If you are talking to a company, let's call it company X, one of the things you definitely want to do is use that company's products. You know, go through the sign-up flow, start using it, uh, and then develop like opinions on what could be, you know, improved, you know, what you like. Uh, understand like the problem that, that that company's product is solving. If you are at a school that has a great alumni network, it's worth reaching out uh, to you know to, to fellow alumni that work at that company. Um, you know you may not hear from nine out of ten alumni that you reach out to, but that one alum who's willing to spend time with you and answer some questions can give you some incredibly useful insight on on you know the interview process and and how to be successful. Um, read tips from uh, recent successful uh, candidates. A lot of candidates will will post online in various forums, like their you know, notes about their interview experience and like what you know what worked for them. It's important to know what type of interview questions are used at the company that you're interviewing with. You know, some companies like to use uh, product sense questions, where they really get into your ability to understand what's going on in a product. You know, other companies will use design questions where they'll ask you to. To, you know, design a product that that works for a specific type of user. A lot of companies will use behavioral questions. Well, they'll ask you um, to you know talk about a time, for example, that you had to use your analytics skills on on something. Um, so, understanding the interview questions that are used at a particular company is 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 important because every company kind of assesses candidates differently. Then learn frameworks for the question types used. Uh, lots of great resources out on the out on the um, internet and um, you know through companies like like uh, Product School that can give you information on the the different types of frameworks that are used in in, in different types of, of questions. You know, a framework is just like a set way that um, allows you to kind of walk through a problem and, and show your thinking in a very structured manner. Um, treat each interview as a as a conversation, you know, this is really important. Like, no matter what type of role you're interviewing for, but you know, it's your job to to really assess: uh, is this a good fit for me? Um, you know, just like they're assessing if you're a good fit for their company. Um, you want to be able to go in with a good set of questions uh, to ask um, of your interview. Finally. Make sure that you're displaying passion, empathy, uh, empathy, and integrity. Those are three of the top traits that I mentioned earlier in this presentation that you want to have uh, as a product manager. Because you know, as a as a someone who's an undergraduate, you don't have a lot of uh, experience to bring to the table. So you know your 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 traits are going to be incredibly important to you know to be able to to show off. Well, that's it. Um, Hopefully this this talk was uh, uh, you know interesting and helpful to you. Really enjoyed um, you know really enjoyed the, the conversation and uh, thank you very much.